Hello, my name is Richard Williams. I'm a senior lecturer in fluvial geomorphology and geospatial science here at the University of Glasgow, and I'm the programme director for our MSc in Sustainable Water Environments. I've been teaching at Glasgow for about five years and both designed and now run this MSc um, programme. When I'm not teaching, I'm involved in research, supervising a range of PhD students, as well as undertaking my own research, which specifically looks at flood risk in the Philippines. It looks at the management of braided rivers and the evolution of braided rivers in some very dynamic mountainous environments across the world, such as in New Zealand. And I also undertake research here in Scotland on natural flood risk management and river restoration. So I've already said I'm the director of this program. We set up our MSc in Sustainable Water Environments just over two years ago now, building upon a legacy of many years of the School of Geographical and Earth Sciences teaching MSc programs in aquatic um, sciences. This year we have about 20 students on our MSc program in Sustainable Water Environments. About half of those students come to us from the UK and from other European countries, and about half of our students come from further afield, for example from Asia and North America. In the presentation over the next five to ten minutes, I want to talk about why you should come to Glasgow to study our Sustainable Water Environments MSc, specifically looking at some of the contemporary drivers that will require professionals in the water sector, both in research and in industry over the coming years. I want to give an overview to you of our course structure and I want to give my perspective on destinations for some of our students that graduate from our programme. You may be asking yourself, is there demand for professionals in the water environment? What are the skills that employers are looking for? The United Kingdom's Natural Environmental Research Council undertook a survey of employers to find out what the most wanted skills were in the postgraduates that they employed. The top six skills were numerical modelling, multidisciplinarity, data management, numeracy, translating research into practice, and field work. These skills were at the forefront of our minds when we designed this MSc programme. So hopefully you'll have the skills when you graduate that are sought after by employers or sought after The Royal Geographical Society with the IBG recently undertook an investigation to identify the top 10 water policy challenges for our country. Many of these are in common with the challenges faced by many other country, countries, both in Europe and further afield. The top challenge is water resource distribution and use. The United Kingdom has more than enough water to meet current demand but the challenge is where that rainfall actually occurs. Rainfall is much higher in the less populated north and west of the UK, but demand is typically highest in the south and east of the UK. Proposed solutions to this geographically uneven distribution of water availability take many forms, but historically have tended towards large scale engineering solutions. Can water be transferred between catchments? Can water be used more sustainably where it's available? What could be learnt from countries with less rainfall? These are just some of the personal questions that need investigation to address this challenge for our future. The second challenge is 
a catchment approach. In the last decade or so, integrated water resource management have promoted integration of policy on landwater interactions. This approach looks to balance the changing and uncertain environmental pressures, such as climate change and society's demand for water use. But substantial progress is still needed to adopt a fully catchment based approach across the entire water sector in the UK. So this report, which you might want to um, look up, um, provides a whole set of different challenges which we thread through our MSC. At a global scale, over the last decade, we've seen a general switch from command and control practices in water policy and management towards natural based solutions. The United Nations World Water Development Report in 2018 focused on such nature based solutions for water management. On the right hand side, you can see a map of the world that shows the change in flood frequencies that can be expected from a 100 year return period event. Through some of the courses on our MSC, you'll develop tools to undertake geospatial analyses, but also to undertake modelling to investigate how climate change might impact flood extents and frequencies, but also how we might monitor river catchments to determine whether nature based solutions are indeed effective and have potential to offset some of the impacts of climate change during our lifetimes. Our MSC in Sustainable Water Environments is made up of a number of courses. The backbone of our MSC programme is provided by two 20 credit courses, Monitoring Water Environments and Modelling Water Environments. A further set of 10 credit courses make up the remainder of the programme in addition to a 60 credit MSC project in sustainable water environments. Those 10 credit courses are listed in the middle of this slide. They focus on the ecology and restoration of water environments, managing sustainable water environments, policy and practice, principles of geographic information systems, topographic mapping and landscape monitoring, an introduction to statistics and a more advanced statistical course on environmental statistics, remote sensing of the environment, and research and professional issues in sustainable water environments. That latter course is very much designed to provide you with the academic skills that you need to undertake many of the other courses, and also to get you ready for the Sustainable Water Environments MSc project. We teach across three semesters. The first two semesters, typically starting in September and January, in a typical academic year will include the taught courses and then the final semester which typically occurs in the summer here in the UK starting in late May or early June is when you'll spend three months on the Sustainable Water Environments MSc project. The next few slides are going to summarise the content of some of the core water courses that you'll follow if you come to Glasgow for the MSc Sustainable Water Environments program. First, the Monitoring Water Environments course is a 20 credit course that I previously described as one of the backbone courses of our MSc program. This course deals with developing skills in the operation and analysis of water environment monitoring methods and technologies. It co also covers the theoretical basis and offers practical experience in measuring biological, chemical and physical properties of a range of water bodies, including lakes, oceans, and rivers. You'll cover the principles of both small and large scale monitoring networks and you'll consider the operation of these networks with respect to sustainability. This course starts off with a series of 10 lectures by different members of staff in the School of Geographical and Earth Sciences who are all active in monitoring the water environment and they'll offer their own perspectives based upon the water systems that they investigate through their contemporary research. The course then proceeds to a field course. The location of our field course varies from year to year, but last year it took place in Oban. Students spent one day monitoring the river Ucha, one day out on Loch Etiv with my colleagues Adrian Bass and Nick Kamenos, 
and then one day in the lab analysing some of the samples they collected. In this slide you can see students out in the river and on the banks of the river Ucha collecting depth and velocity data from which they calculated discharge using an acoustic Doppler current profiler, technology that's widely used in the environmental regulation industry here in the UK by bodies such as the Environment Agency and the Scottish Environmental Protection Agency and Natural Resources Wales. On this next slide, you can see students out on Loch Etiv with Adrian and Nick. We had absolutely stunning weather um, this year out on the, on the boat. You can see some of the samples that students acquired from the bed of the, of the lake and that were taken back to the labs to analyse the biogeochemistry. The second 20 credit course, which also provides a backbone to the whole of the programme, is our course in modelling water environments. In a typical year, I'll teach this course with my colleague Martin Hurst. This course covers a range of different aspects of monitoring and modelling sustainable water environments. It covers modelling and predicting water and sediment fluxes from catchment coast. It covers the theoretical basis for hydrodynamics, sediment transport and morphological change. It covers the principles of modelling across a range of spatial and temporal scales and it covers the use of modelling in sustainable environmental management decision making. You'll use industry grade software such as Flood Modeler shown in the bottom left hand corner here in order to gain skills in flood inundation modelling for example and landscape evolution modelling. We start the course up with a series of lectures and labs to provide you with fundamental skills in modelling water environments and then the course progresses to you gaining skills in a number of different software packages and then the course finishes with you working on an independent investigation to simulate a particular water environment that you're interested in by applying the skills that you've developed earlier in the course. The third course I want to introduce is our course in the ecology and restoration of water environments. This course explores recent advances in ecology and the restoration of river, coastal and lake environments and case studies of managing, protecting and restoring water systems. It also considers the concepts of resilience to human pressures and climate change. It's delivered for a series of lectures and workshops and includes some quite interesting assessment a one page summary or report of scientific findings that are aimed at restoration practitioners and an essay of no more than 2000 words that's based on a theme introduced in the lecture material. The example there of the varied um, assessment is typical of our courses. We're trying to build a range of fundamental skills in how you analyse data and draw together contemporary literature and reports to establish yourself ready for employment. The fourth course that I'd like to provide a summary of is our course on managing sustainable water environments, policy and practice. This course provides an introduction to the regulatory policy and practice context within which water systems are managed and to which water system science contributes. This course introduces high level principles and context and then examines these through two case study blocks. While studying this course, you'll gain first-hand experience of creating a policy briefing on issues of current relevance, such as natural mitigation of flood risk, and you'll also look at an additional topic and provide a lay summa summary, for example, as a blog or a podcast. This course really helps your employability through understanding policy context and the science policy interface, and gives you experience in crafting concise evidence-based briefings for policy, practice, and lay audiences. In addition to the four courses that I've just described, you'll also study a number of other courses, including principles of geographic information systems, topographic mapping and landscape monitoring, introduction to statistics, environmental statistics, remote sensing of the environment and research skills. All of these are underpinned with water themes. On the right hand side of this slide, you can see some photos of a student acquiring images using an unmanned aerial vehicle 
as part of the course that I teach on topographic mapping and landscape monitoring. Here, those images are processed using structure from motion photogrammetric software to provide an ortho image and a very high resolution digital elevation model of a river valley that could then be used to map geomorphic features or to undertake geomorphic change detection if the landscape evolves or to provide fundamental topographic data to run, for example, a flood risk assessment. So courses such as these are providing some of the foundational skills that you then need to investigate the water environment. For many students, the highlight and accumulation of their MSc programme is their independent research project, which for full time students typically takes place over a three month period. Here's a photo of a number of MSc students that went out on a field campaign with myself to the River Feshi in the Cairngorms in the north of Scotland last year, where we acquired data as a group for a range of different MSc projects that focused upon the numerical modelling of flow across this braided river that investigated changes in the vegetation of this um, river and also investigated morphodynamic change of this relatively dynamic river system here in the UK. We give you lots of support, um, particularly towards the end of semester two, to assist you with developing your MSc project. You might develop your own independent project, or you might develop a project from a suggested title by a member of academic staff or a postdoc in the school. You'll then undertake field work or use archive data to undertake um, your project um, during um, the, the remainder of the three month um, period. I hope my presentation so far has given you some insight into our programme in sustainable water environments. You might be thinking, if I do come to Glasgow, what do I do next? You might be thinking about further postgraduate research study through a PhD, or you might be thinking about a career in industry or in government. In this final slide, I just wanted to summarise some of the key employers of water science graduates here in the UK a range of governmental organisations, industry and organisations from the third sector employ graduates with the types of skills that you would leave Glasgow with if you come here to study the programme. Thank you for listening to this presentation. If you do have any questions, please do ask them using the links on our website or contact me at richard.williams at glasgow.ac.uk. Thank you. And I do hope to see you in Glasgow in the future.